I, I'm sorry, before you, before you go into embedded generation, but okay. I'm just thinking of that word redundancy. I'm wondering if you're using it as I used it. Do you, by redundancy, I was also implying some amount of waste. In other words, they're just there, infrastructure that we spend billions of money. We don't need them anymore. What are we to do with them? Can we just jettison them like that? Is that the same thing you're referring to? No, no, in engineering, we love yes. redundancy. Okay. Because redundancy is the thing that guarantees there's no failure. Okay. If it's when you, are not redundant, when you don't have redundancy, that you are in Mutala Mohammed Airport, the power goes. And it goes for 30 minutes or one hour. So yeah. what does redundancy mean in engineering? Because that's... It means that in if English this language. fails, another thing kicks in. That's what it means? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and you need it. You love redundancy. You love to build redundancy into systems. Because that's what guarantees that you will not have failure. So the system we have today does not have redundancy. So redundancy in engineering, we love it. So the generation pocket says to, uh, to create the redundancy for the national grid. Yes. For the major infrastructure we have already. Yeah, the whole, yeah, exactly, yeah, it supports it. It supports what we have. So that it, it, you, the situation you have today where the whole country can be in darkness, you're no longer ha going to have that. So I'll have microgrids all over. If my system fails, it will feed in from surrounding grids. Mm. But let me come in here. Yes. When you talk about these grids, these are generation grids, right? Or does that also include the distribution? It grid? does, yeah. It, it, it includes both. It, 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 you generate locally. So I go to an area where there is natural gas, for example. And I build a natural gas plant. And by the way, there are technologies now that Nigeria can exploit. There are what they call fuel cells. They don't combust the, the, the gas. They, they operate like batteries. You feed them in, they will take natural gas, they will take biogas. You feed them in, you generate electricity, clean, no noise. Water is the only byproduct of it. So I go to an area where is bio, where is a, a, a biogas plant or a solar plant. Everywhere in Nigeria you can build solar plants. Whether it's wind, whether it's uh, ocean waves, whether it's hydro and all that. So I build locally, and I build the grid that will deliver this to the customers, the users. And metering is an important part of it. Whenever you're in a system where operators are not eager or anxious to get meters, you have to question that system. It's like your telco that's giving you airtime, not wanting to know how to build you. There's something wrong there. So if our power system is working well, the service providers should be excited about giving you meters and all that. So you put meters, just locally, and look at where they have transformers now on your streets. And I will run grids there from there. You, you use what they have now, but, you, you, but you, you, you will build on it. I will also put storage there. Some of the things I'm talking about now, because we have nothing, it's an opportunity for us as a country to build, when we build it, you build it well. Okay? So at that micro level, which is almost your street township level, I will have storage systems. So that whatever I'm generating, I'll supply to the users, the extra I'll save, the redundancy. So that if I have any problem with my generation, okay, I have a storage system to tap from. Who are you asking to go into this sort of ventures? Because here we are, we are a new system. Uh, we have the generation companies used to be owned by government, they've been privatized now. The transmission company, the federal government still keeps, and then distribution companies which have also been privatized. Uh, we are asking that we, you know, bring, bring up micro-generation grids. Who is supposed to be powering that? And who are they going to be selling to? Is it the communities directly, or do they still have to go through the distribution companies as well? Fantastic question, my way. Um, we should create 
hundreds and hundreds of small and medium enterprises responsible for power generation. And we are already moving along the right path because the, the discos and other Ingencos, they are already trying to make deals. I read somewhere that Lagos is trying to generate about 300 megawatts from about 40 uh, different companies. Fantastic. I think we are moving along the right path. And I think um, you say, who are they selling to? Mm -hmm. Your first set of buyers are those who have the responsibility of supply. They have the deals to do in it. They already have the license, but they cannot produce enough. Okay. And some of the things I'm talking about, Nigeria is doing it, but we're doing it by force. You must say by two last. You have a situation now where people are self generating. Have people who have 20 kVA, 40 kVA, 60 kVA in their homes. The only problem is that you're generating this for your house and your neighbor is doing the same thing and there's no coordination. There's no coordination. So what I'm talking about is that you're going to aggregate things. At the level in which we're operating now is too, is too coarse. So you want to engage more SMEs. So at the end of the day, so I'm not just looking at a coal electricity. They continue to do what they're doing, but they will now have small companies that will become their suppliers. And they will have a responsibility. As the suppliers of power, right? Oh, of, yeah, of, of energy, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, because we, we supply energy. Uh, power is the rate at which you use energy, okay? Um, an analogy I'll give is that if, uh, if, if you guys Somebody gives you a million naira each. Your financial energy is a million naira. Okay. So if you return loves to party, and <laughs> he goes out spraying every weekend, uh, he parties a hundred thousand. The rate at which he's spending it, that shows his power. The way if he spends it by time he spends ten weeks, you know, a million will be gone. So you started with the same type of same level of energy, but the rate at which we are spending it. So the, what we keep talking about is the rate at which energy is consumed. So ultimately, you are looking for situations in which small and medium enterprises, localized within the, the community, will become uh, suppliers of electricity to, to the Jankos. And in some cases, they might not need to feed that power into the national grid. Mm, that's where the problem might be, because the law is still in such a way that you still have to feed energy to the national grid. No, the, the law does allow certain limitations, some, some, some way that we can feed One it megawatt, if you, if you produce more than one megawatt, you have to feed to the national exactly. grid. Exactly. So there, there, are two, there are two things to say there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing bad about one megawatt. <laughs> it's a lot, okay? for our, our usage. I also think that we need to take a second look at the law. I think we make it too difficult for people here to generate power. We make it too difficult. The law has been um, simplified and made easy a little bit in the past couple of years. But we need to go more. I've been, um, I've been on panels where people are trying to do 70 megawatts of solar, 50, 100 megawatts. And when I see the pain they go through, if somebody is going to generate power from, uh, from solar, from the sun, solar panels, there's no pollution. It's going to create jobs. It's going to meet a need. Why should they go through hoops? Before we start putting laws in place that make it difficult for people to do this, you must have enough. 